CataractCoach.com. For capsule wrinkling, I do this method. These radial wrinkles indicate global xylaxy. Let me show you a whole case, start to finish. So you can see here, we've got a normal paracentesis. Looks like reasonable dilation. Patient is about mid-80s, going in with some anesthetic. Again, no issues so far. Lens looks pretty stable. And now coming with the viscoelastic, and we'll also see that everything looks pretty normal. The patient's pre-op exam, again, nothing out of the ordinary. Completely normal pre-op exam. So pretty good dilation there. I like that. Not too bad of a cataract. Here comes fixation ring and our diamond keratome. And let's make a 2.2 millimeter incision here. And looks pretty good. There it is. Just a slightly enlarge that, just a tiny bit. And now let's get the rexes done. Here's where you're going to notice the issues. Watch this. So normally I poke in with the forceps. So I measure that out and poke in and look at the wrinkling. Look at all that wrinkling. Now that tells me that it's global zyro laxity. Not terrible. But all over, just a bit lax on the xylar support. And that can happen. This patient, again, is mid-80s. And so getting the rex is done here. Nicely done. Flipping that around. And we want that exact 5-millimeter rex. So I'm taking my time here. Now, as I'm tearing the rexes, there is no further wrinkling. So I'm probably not going to need a capsule tension ring in that eye. There's the 5-millimeter rexes. But what I do want to do is I want the nucleus out of the bag. I don't want to operate in this loosey-goosey bag. So BSS going there to hide or dissect it. Nice and easy, slow and steady, not forceful, taking my time. There it is. Nucleus comes up. Now let's rotate this a little bit. Let's make sure that nucleus is sufficiently up in the uh, halfway there in the pupil. More viscoelastic to protect that central endothelium. There it goes. And here comes the phaco probe. Now... I want to do a chop right off the bat, so put the probe inside the eye. Got our small pink sleeve on there, the 2.2 sleeve. And going in here with the probe right in the middle, chop, we're going to go around the equator, and let's break this thing in two halves. Didn't quite get it. That's okay. Watch what we do next. So we'll aspirate a little more of the nucleus, try to get this thing moved around here. A little bit of a shallow anterior chamber, too, so I don't want to be too much in the AC. I want to be more iris plane. Let's try again, get the chop around, maybe a little better, but still haven't broken off a big enough piece. Let's try again. Notice the tenacity. I'm not giving up here, no chance, no way, no how. And let's take a look here, more aspiration. And again, so we didn't get that first chop that we wanted, that's okay, I'm just kind of keeping the nucleus tilted on the side. Again, I wanna do, let's try a, a Lindstrom here, tilt and tumble technique, or perhaps I could finally get the chopper around. Let's see, can we finally split it? Not really. So I want to show you real life cases. This is a tough case. It really is not a simple case. But we'll do some aspiration here, more debulking the nucleus. So now we're essentially doing a tilt and tumble technique. I'm trying to still get a chop going here for this nucleus. And in a case like this, I'm going to show you, after we move the cataract, this nucleus, you're going to have little bits of nuclear material that have gone through gaps in the zonular support and will be sitting in the antihyloid face. So look at that, not a single chop achieved, so we've done basically a tilt and tumble technique and getting these pieces out. Now there's a little bit of a separation between those pieces, but taking our time here, aspirating these down nice and easy, piece by piece, looks good. There we go, chopper in that safe position. Remember that bag's already loose, so I don't wanna have any undue risks here. So chopper in the safe position, taking these pieces down. Woo, there it is, nucleus removed. Now, it's important, too, to me. This patient is near and dear to my heart. So I really want to deliver the best outcome for this patient. And now, so you go over to the IA probe. So for cortex removal, because I saw that, that global xyrolaxy, what am I going to look for? Make sure the rexus doesn't move. Right? Think about it. If the rexus is moving as you're taking out cortex, what does that mean? That means you're pulling on weak zonules, or there's really, really weak zonule support. So I'm watching, as I take out the cortex, look at the rexus edge. It looks pretty good. It looks stable. So I'm happy here. So now I know, yeah, there's some laxity there. Look behind the posterior capsule. You see the little pieces of lens material in the antihyloid face? Yeah, for sure. So that's very typical in a case like this. Those are tiny little fragments, and they were just small enough to be able to go through the gaps in the zonal support. Those, of course, will be dissolved in the cascade of inflammation. So there you go. You can see those tiny little particles there. Here comes a cohesive viscological. Let's fill up the capsular bag. 
And now, look, see the little particles? All those, yeah, they're tiny. It's not much. They'll be gone, you know, very shortly, within a few days. But that's going to cause a little bit extra inflammation. So in the post op period, be a little more cautious. Here comes our capsular polisher. I want to deliver a nice, beautiful result here. A little bit of lens material you can see is, is brought off. The undersurface of the lens capsule. Here comes the IOL, single piece, a monofocal acrylic lens. Aiming for a target of Plano for this patient for best distance vision. I'm happy to say this patient achieved nice 20-20 vision. Here comes the lens going in nice and easy. Beautiful. Now, I don't want too much manipulation with a loose bag like this or slight laxity. Let's just get it gently in the bag. A minimal amount of manipulation. Rotate it just a little bit. Get the haptics opened up. I like it. And that's a good size rexus. Looks like the rexus overlaps the optic 360, which is perfect. Now, going behind, let's remove the viscoelastic. A little bit slower on this. Slow down the flow rate, slow down the vacuum. There it is. Now cleaning up, a little bit more polishing of the undersurface if needed of that lens capsule. Taking on all the viscoelastic from the anterior segment as well, the anterior chamber. And now that's a nice looking rex. It's beautiful overlap. This looks fantastic. Again, this patient had a fantastic result. So happy. But this is a stressful case. So when you see a patient, you're starting off, and you're trying to get that rexus done, you see that wrinkling of the capsule, that means xylolaxity. In this case, it's just global xylolaxity, not from pseudoexfoliation or trauma, just patient's old age. This happens with time to some patients. So let's get that lens beautifully centered, seal up the incision, call it a day. Thank you for watching. So if you have a case like this, keep these important pearls in mind. At the end, psh, I love it. Beautiful.